Hey guys, Bobby Salison from the Hazmat Guys here in my full The Hazmat Guys leisure costume. Uh, bringing you back part two of the wet chemistry demonstration done by Todd Burton from San Diego. So without any further ado, let's get right into this video. Actually, get to the video now. Hey guys, Bobby from the Hazmat Guys here once again, and we're gonna do race pace solid identification with this little bit of anthrax that I got live. No, I'm joking. It is not anthrax, it is an unknown. I'm handing it over to Todd. Here he goes, there it is. Uh-oh, we don't know what it is. Let's figure it out. Let's take a good look at it. Now he's not explaining what he's doing, but he has these kind of algorithms all memorized. Do a quick oxidizer test like we did in the beginning. Quick ox. Nothing there. Acid test. Nothing there. Put that aside. Water solubility test. We're gonna cheat a little bit. Not marking anything on it. I want to see if it dissolves. Put more water than I needed to. It's dissolving slowly. What the hell did you give me, Bobby? I don't know. Can't remember. It is dissolving. Okay. So there is less in there than when I started. Okay, so dissolve the pH of this material. See if you give me an acid or a base. Neutral. Good to go from there. Next thing I'm gonna do is come all the way down. I'm going to burn it. I'm gonna take a little bit into here. Anytime you burn something, you want to make sure it's not explosive. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah. There's actually a step for that. Put a little bit on here. They want you to do a Q-tip test, but sometimes you don't have time to do that. If you're racing, you can do it real quick. Drop the acid on here. A little bit on this. You do a snap, crack, a pop. It's turning black on the Q-tip. So uh, I know this is organic. Put that away. I'm gonna do this one. This is the next one, which is the thermal analysis tool. There's some previous colors on there. You see the, the lavender right in there? Yeah. That's from some kind of potassium material, probably a potassium nitrate and gunpowder. So we'll put this in here, see if it explodes, catches on fire. Nothing going on there, so it's safe for us to burn it in the test tube. For now, I'm find a little bit I had in here earlier. Keep the flame going. Get this piece of pH paper out, because I need to be able to do a thermal analysis of pH. I need to do a thermal oxidizer test at the very end. So the pH goes first. Then I'm gonna start to heat this up. And as soon as it starts to break down, I'm gonna try to take the pH of this. It's starting to get break down there. I'm gonna put this in the head space. Check out my pH paper, it's a little bit acidic. See that? A little bit of a red tab there. So I have a, it's really kicking out, so I'm gonna see if I can ignite it, here we go. So I got that uh, nice organic flame at the top with a little bit of a blue base. We got some smoke going. So this is probably something very simple. As we go through this, it's starting to get consumed. We wanna go until we get this, until we start making crack pipes, basically. Get this thing heated up, I got a little bit of a dimple in there. So it's definitely organic. It's a low, low pH. Oop, gotta do my ox test. Oxidizer test in the headspace, trying not to get the, the sides touched because it looks like it's all gooey and brown. Now this will go dark purple and we can show you what that looks like on a later test, but those are both negative. We got low pH, negative ox for thermal, 
And we'll take a quick look at the chart. So down here, I got, uh, that's a liquid side. If I go to the solid side, nothing blew up at the top. It's not an oxidizer. Um, it did thermally ignite over here. So if I look at my, my thermal pH was low, um, two to eight, it's sending me to flower test. So if I take a little bit of my unknown and put a little bit on here, the flower test is just potassium iodide solution, which is right here. Take a little bit of this. If I put potassium iodide onto any kind of starch, those are used. I want to use a used one. On any kind of starch, it'll turn a blackish kind of color. No black. So you didn't give me a starch. All right, so that's going to be negative. So it's negative for the flower test. It's pushing me towards sugar, uh, alcohols, polyalcohols, sugar with arsenic. So it's pushing me towards sugar. So I'm going to take a quick shortcut. Instead of trying to test for an alcohol anion, there's an old chemistry demonstration where you take sulfuric acid and you put it on the sugar and it turns black and sometimes will actually make like a little call of like the old snakes that you used to have for fireworks. We don't have fireworks out here anymore. <laughs> Take a little bit of this. Now if this goes black, or if it turns black in the process, this is gonna be sugar. Let's see what it does here. It's got a little bit of time to react. More. That's what the directions will say to do. It says give it a lot, I believe. Kind of mix this up. Let's we'll see if this starts to turn brownish or blackish. We'll let that sit there for a few minutes. Turn this over. And we'll look in the book real quick and see what the observations say. But I believe any black or brown should be a positive. It's called a dehydration test. Cyanide test. Dehydration test. Sulfuric acid, add one spoonful of the unknown, add 12 drops to the unknown with sulfuric acid. Add it slow at first, then add it quick like we did. Allow three minutes to color chain while shaking intermittently. And it says here, dark brown to black is positive which is starting to turn right there, dark brown to black. This was our original unknown color. So it is saying that it's positive for sucrose or common table sugar polyalcohol indicator. God, he's got it. I try to fake him out with a simple one. I gave you some packet sugar from, uh, what is that, that raw table, is it sugar in a raw? Cane sugar? <clears throat> That's it. I'm gonna show you guys how it can be done quickly if you needed to do it. Um, this is nothing to, uh, throw your nose at, uh, this fills a huge gap in our infrared, uh, what, metering technology, Yeah, especially right? for salts, like potassium iodide, I think, which we talked about on the podcast. Uh, any, like, so, okay, I want sodium chloride. So just straight up, straight up table salt. Your IR is not gonna see that. So in the book, you would go to a, a metal analysis test, which we showed you earlier, um, which will give you all those different colors right here. And this is color. So this would be, if, so if you were dealing with table salt, you can find sodium right here, you put a little sodium into a flame, you get a bright yellow color, and then for the anion, you gotta go kinda, you're taking a guess, cause you think it's, you think it's gonna be a chloride. So you'd end up doing what's called a chloride test. And that's just this little reagent right here, you dissolve, it does all of your salt into a test tube, and you put two drops of this, big white cloud, you got chloride positive, you got sodium flame, sodium chloride. You can be done with that in literally less than two minutes. All right, guys, thank you. All right, guys, thank you for taking a minute to look at this and listen. Uh, be sure to go below and subscribe. Go to iTunes and subscribe to the Hazmat Guys podcast and check out the uh, website. Get the newsletter, thehazmatguys.com. Keep coming back. We'll have more.